this will impact the world if people can just grasp that. These farmers and ranchers feed the world and we're gonna have a million acre feet of water covering up an area that feeds the world. A global setback for the South Valley. Levees bursting, creeks overflowing. Many communities and farmland in Tulare and Kings counties underwater after another round of powerful storms blister the Central Valley. Emergency declarations have been made, but when is the relief coming and how significant is the loss? South Valley Assemblyman Devin Mathis, who represents the areas impacted by the floods, joining me now. Welcome back to Sunday Morning Matters. Good to see you. And boy, you're all muddied up. It's been a, a crazy week for you. In fact, you know, they kind of you thought that you may have gone up to Sacramento this week, but you wanted to stay behind and to see and assess the damage. What are you looking at specifically? It, I mean, my biggest piece for my office is support. Mm -hmm. but it's different being on the ground with people so they know that you're there and that you care. And so we've got stuff up on our website for resources. My staff's already working on, you know, as casework comes in and people have trouble with state agencies, things like that, we're ready. We're helping all the locals um, from the smallest irrigation districts all the way up on supporting them and getting resources together. Um, the fires have been kind of a blessing in disguise because all of our agencies are already working together. There's open mm. lines of communication. So there haven't been any problems with any of that, which is really good to see in a situation like this. You know, I'm wondering, we, we did hear from Sheriff Robinson this week, Kings County, and he says- with him yesterday. You were with him yesterday. And this, he has clearly said this impact is global over time. Can you give me a sense of the significance of the loss? It's when what he's talking about there, I believe, is the agricultural mm -hmm. lands. You know, one in four jobs in the valley is tied to agriculture. Um, and then, you know, then you get into spouses and, and things like that. And you, you have multipliers mm -hmm. um, where, when, when you really look at the population wise, probably over half a million people just in the local area are directly tied to ag. Mm -hmm. And so, with the losses in the crops, that's a loss in jobs, that's a loss in revenue, that's a loss in revenue back to the cities, the counties, back to the state, back to the federal side. Um, and then that's food mm -hmm. that's not going out globally. Right. So, and then you topple that with like Ukraine and other things mm -hmm. where we're already hurting. I mean, there, there's a lot going on in the valleys, the breadbasket. Mm -hmm. Well, the governor's response, I know some of your colleagues signed on to a declaration. Um, part of that declaration letter was not originally part of Tulare County in some of your areas, but uh, um, the governor's response now, are you in communication with his office to really understand the magnitude of this? It's, I've been talking to some of the secretaries. Mm -hmm. I was on the phone with uh, Secretary of Natural Resources Wade Crowfoot today. Um, so getting some response there, nothing directly from the governor himself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's a little disappointing, but what we are seeing is Department of Water Resources has been deployed. Mm -hmm. um, people are doing the right things and there's movement in the right direction. What we really need uh, now is for the governor to not just state of emergency, but declare this a disaster. Mm -hmm. Because once he declares the disaster, that opens up for more federal funding to come in and give people more help in being able to be made whole. The governor just came off that state of the state tour, the Central Valley not included in that. What's the reaction of your colleagues on both sides of the aisle? Well, it's, we have a governor who does his own thing and doesn't work well with others. Mm. And it's been an issue. Um, it's been an issue with our budgets. It's been an issue with a lot of things. Um, I, I could sit here and tell you 101 bad things about him, um, but right now we need him to respond. We need him to act and make sure resources are coming down. And we're starting to see that, um, but we need to make sure that it's open all the way. And, and for my other colleagues, don't go do things in the dark and send letters in the dark. Get the whole Valley Caucus to sign on. Mm -hmm. I want to switch gears a bit. This week, the state Senate and a committee, a subcommittee, as you know, approved Governor Newsom's new proposal to allow the California Energy Commission to scrutinize and consider penalizing oil refineries 
when they make too much money off of California drivers. I know state Republican lawmakers have been fighting this, but it's going to be moving on, as you know. What, what do you fear from this approach um, that, you know, and not to say refineries are innocent here. I don't think you would say that either. Well, I, I think you got to kind of step back and look at this. And what's not being said, right, what we hear is record number profits, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they're making more money than they ever have. But we need to step back and look at what the margins of inflation are. First, you have California's taxes and fees already stacked onto it, right? So, so you have that here. And then you stack on minimum wage increases. That, that's another margin of inflation. And then the cost of energy, right, because this pushes up this, pushes up the cost of energy, which then pushes up the cost of water production, which then pushes up the cost of fuels, mm -hmm. right? And then you get into rendering raw materials, agricultural products, everything else then to the final production, then resell where you and I are buying it. Mm -hmm. So you have all these different steps that are pushing the cost to do anything in the state up. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to address that. They're not addressing the fact that we're the highest tax state right. in the union. Mm -hmm. They don't want to talk about that. Instead, they're going, well, inflation's way up here. These guys are making more money than ever. Well, well they're making more money than ever because inflation. But it doesn't mean that their bottom line, their profits, are going up. And so you've got to look at that aspect. Do you think it's political suicide that he's doing this? It's it's Governor Newsom. He's going to do what he's going to do. Okay. But, but I mean, ultimately, here, here's the biggest question, and, and the question I ask my colleagues to think about. Mm -hmm. When in the history of taxes, going all the way back to ancient times, has increasing taxes lowered cost? Mm -hmm. The answer is never. I want to, I got a couple of seconds here, a lot to uh, process. Will gas prices ever dip below $4 a gallon again? Uh, when we get a new president and a new governor. You think that'll happen because of that? You know, I, I, I think that the mechanics of government bureaucracies and in, in visions of the Democrat Party, the, the mm -hmm. utopia that they believe in, mm -hmm. It is a falsity, um, you know, politically, and I, and I can get political trouble for this, but I think mm -hmm. both sides need, need a lot of looking in the mirror mm -hmm. and need to realize that everybody is living kind of in the middle of that, mm -hmm. trying to provide, you know, if, if they don't have a family, they're trying to figure out how to get by and, and what to do with themselves. Others are out there struggling, trying to take care of their families, put food on the plate. You know, meantime, we've got a state of emergency with a flood. Um, we, we're still in a drought emergency too, mm -hmm. because we don't have the infrastructure in the state of California. We may be the fourth largest economy in, in the world, mm -hmm. but we have third world conditions right here at home in the San Joaquin Valley, which is probably why the government didn't stop here in the first place. Right. We're gonna have to leave it there. Devin Mathis, appreciate the time. Thank, Thank you. you. All right.